I'm here today talking to you guys about combining GRC with ESG. My name is Maria Beek. Uh, also going to say Moro. If there's anyone Finnish on the line, that's actually one, one of our many words for hello. I'm American Finnish, currently based in sunny Helsinki, Finland. Um, spent the last seven and a half years in GRC, actually, in, in consultant roles and vendor roles, as well as in-house roles. Before that, I've been a researcher in biomedical engineering, also done some cognitive neuroscience, done IT project management, advising medical companies, and then B2B sales, as well as B2C sales. Uh, outside work, I'm an avid soccer fan. <laughs> I'm a soccer player, assistant coach to young soccer players, and also a soccer mom. I have a total of five kids keeping me busy, in addition to my current role, leading cyber coach, a new kind of cybersecurity awareness startup or company. In this talk today, I'll introduce uh, ESG and GRC a little bit. I know you guys are professionals here, so I'm not going to bore you too much and not get too academic or theoretical about it and try to move on as fast as I can. Let's then go over some synergies and combining GRC with ESG, which was also the topic. Oh, I realize that you guys might not be actually seeing my slides. I'll keep going. All right, so the talk today, I'll, I'll, as I said, go over the intro real quick introduce the topics of ESG and GRC uh, without getting too academic or too in-depth about the theory. Then we'll explore some synergies because I'm an engineer, I love Venn diagrams, so I'm going to be exploring those synergies through some Venn diagrams and then really spending the bulk of the talk deep diving into some practical examples of concrete activities that we can do uh, that fulfill both the GRC compliance requirements but actually take them further and, and into the domain of ESG. So what is GRC? Well, the GRC, obviously, is an integrated collection of capabilities that enable an organization to reliably achieve objectives, address uncertainty, and act with integrity. This is an academic definition, as you can probably hear, but I think it's a, fundamentally a pretty good one. It's less about just fulfilling risk management and actually being a strategic, strategic capability. Um, but actually, so is ESG. ESG capabilities are, uh, I'm realizing the, it is cutting off some things off my slide, but I'll, I'll try to see if I can still do this. Um, let's go back. I'm really sorry about all of the technical issues. But yes, um, ESG and GRC are actually really synergistic because, and, and then fundamentally the same thing, uh, these are capabilities that focus so ESG is just about GRC capabilities that focus on environmental aspects, social responsibility, and governance. And what is ESG and what is it not? Well, ESG, just like GRC, a set of capabilities that are critical for a company's long-term financial value. But, but I would argue that they're also a core part of the business. They're leveraging some of the core business capabilities, and we'll talk more about that later. And what ESG definitely is not, it's not a new niche discipline that requires separate degrees and great siloed leadership. The, for this topic, we need leaders that understand ESG and actual business because it's such a core capability. It's also not political. It's really about leveraging uh, the, these capabilities, uh, creating tangible value for all shareholders of the company. And that, that's basically how I see it. It's, it's something that creates tangible bottom line value for an organization. Here we go. Well, let's look at the, the goals. What, what do ESG goals have in common with GRC goals? Well, acting with integrity, that was already in the definition. Right? So that's definitely one of, one of the things that, that ES, are common between ESG and GRC. Managing uncertainty, definitely as well. So we're trying to predict the future and, and see and quantify things that may seem nebulous and potentially unquantifiable and manage them and, and, and leverage them. Uh, it's uh, both of these uh, domains, capabilities are about building trust. And that's, that's something that also creates, ultimately creates shareholder value. And that's, that's also an aim between both ESG and GRC. So I would actually argue that a lot of the goals uh, of ESG work are actually the goals of GRC work and fundamentally also the goals of business, businesses overall in an overarching way. Well, what are the enablers 
of ESG and GRC. No surprises here. Everything really boils down to people. It boils down to some processes. It boils down to some technology and also data. So to me, also the enablers of ESG are actually synergistic, synonymous with the enablers of GRC and enablers of any, any business. So if we dip, deep dive into some topics that ESG and GRC share, well, uh, all of these come down to culture. Acting with integrity is not something that we do as individuals. It's something that we do as an or organization in collaboration and culture. It's how we, how well or how bad we actually end up doing in that. Governance, of course, um, there's no compliance and there's no sustainability without somebody taking ownership and some governance structure in place. Cybersecurity risk, well, we're here at a day of security, a cybersecurity conference. So obviously that's a domain that we care about a lot. And that's a domain that I would argue has a lot uh, in common and, and, and a lot, lot, of, lot of synergies between the GRC capability of cyber risk uh, management and then uh, what we need in, in ESG work for a sustainable future. And that's that's really what I like to talk about a lot. Um, cyber social responsibility is something that goes beyond managing cyber risk. And I'll, I'll talk about a bit, a bit about that soon. Privacy risk management, again, a shared capability and topic between GRC and ESG. Environmental risk, I won't be talking about that too much um, uh, today. Ethical standards and obvious DEI, I think, is should have been also in the enabler side in a way. I think that's something that's fundamental to doing the right thing across an organization, having a diverse group of professionals working on these topics. Well, most of these topics listed in this Venn diagram, um, they're not necessarily yet business topics, or they might be siloed or niche business topics, but they really should be something that's on the agenda of all strategic leadership and top leadership of companies. So um, what's cyber social responsibility? Uh, and wh where does that come from? Um, the issue, the problem we have in, the, in our society currently is that privacy and security online have actually become things individuals need to afford. They require skills and they require ability. And we need to have those skills and ability to select and pay for cyber solutions online and pay, pay to be safe and pay to, pay to have privacy. And of course, that doesn't work because we don't all have those skills equally and we don't have all the ability equally. To, to achieve these goals of uh, security and privacy online. So we're in a situation where we have growing digital, digital skills inequality that's correlating with socioeconomic inequality and worsening it. And this decline in our, or this increasing digital inequality is also something that threatens all of our safety. So it's not just about some people being worse off because we have internet and we, <laughs> they're not as protected because they don't know how to be protected, actually, that we're all less protected because they are less protected. And this is something I'm passionate about, um, both at work and outside work and talk about a lot. And this is something that's also easy for companies to get started with. So companies can actually leverage their existing GRC capabilities for cyber social responsibility. And um, happy to share some practical examples of how to do that. A little bit of comic first, because I realize I don't have any means or anything in front of these slides, so let's look at a little bit of images. So very compliance-driven GRC looks like the picture on the left. We might have an ivory tower of cops <laughs> saying that you have to do your training or we will be fined and you will be fired. And that's that's not the kind of approach to GRC we're talking about today. We're actually talking about driven approach. So GRC, we're talking about an organization saying we want you people you care about to be safe. And we want to we want to protect our customers, but we also want to protect our society. So ultimately putting at least the S and G S is S and the G in, in this G. I'm really sorry about how my slides are translated. They don't look very legible to me, but I hope you guys can somehow follow them. Uh, so one of the topics I, I mentioned in the previous Lovely Venn diagrams, employee data protection. That's something that we're already doing in GRC. Very often that compliance focused employee data protection is just about a company deciding that they, this is the data we need to operate. This is the data we need to collect on our employees and employees have little to say about it. 
uh, and not just because there is a, a imbalance of power that employees don't feel like they can actually say no if an employer says that this is what we want to do with your data. And very often or more often than not, the employee also does not understand what is the data that their employer is collecting on them. Well, if we shift this from a compliance focus uh, to an ESG focus, that means that we're actually proactively collecting minimal data from employees. We're being ultra transparent about it and making sure that employees feel like they can be in control of it. We're educating employees on their digital rights, and their privacy rights, and we're making sure that no employee has to read a book to understand what their rights are when they are at work. And a modern day example, well, we're, we're still living in a hybrid work, work life. I mean, we're in a hybrid event now. Uh, we're using our personal devices for work and also our work devices for, uh, we're also working, working hybrid in remote. So this is the world, world we're in today. And to many of us employees, we're actually not sure what our IT and security teams can see when we're using our devices for personal use. So we're wondering to what extent, what, what, is, what are they monitoring on my mobile phone? Example? Do they see all the apps I'm using? Do they see my messages that I'm sending? Do they know, see the pictures I'm taking? There's a lot of unclarity about that. And I think a lot of organizations could be more transparent about that. And the issue often is that the legal experts that are in charge of the data privacy may not understand all of the technical monitoring that the security team does. And there might be a disconnect there, which leads to a disconnect in, in communicating that. But this is something that all companies I think could be better at and, and um, leveraging existing capabilities. So really uh, using privacy risk management as a tool, but also combining that with internal communications and making, making this very, very clear for employees. Security awareness training, that's my favorite topic. That's what I've been doing for the past five years, building building a security awareness training company. So there also, I find that a lot of the companies are still very much focused on protecting their business risks with security awareness training and uh, even transferring that business risk to employees through training sign-offs. So giving suboptimal training or training that doesn't teach much and then telling the employee to sign off that I know this. And then if they make a mistake, then that becomes the employee's fault. And that can be a compliance-focused uh, approach, but it's certainly not a sustainable approach. And a sustainable ESG-focused approach, an employer actually provides psychological training and support for employees so they actually know how to stay safe online, also outside work, and they're capable of helping their family, their children, their parents stay safe outside work as well. And employers can do a lot. They can go beyond just awareness training to skill training, but they can also provide tooling. So they can enable and provide password managers, VPNs, and other security and privacy tools, not just for their employee employees to use in their personal lives, but actually outside, uh, outside of work in their personal lives, but also for their family. Employers could also, and they can even, even stick that a step forward and encourage and reward employees that spend time coaching their family and, and others in, in their community to take, take these kinds of security and privacy tools into use. So again, tools that they already have, most likely a lot of the, you know, for example, the password manager plans, it's very easy to switch between a plan that they currently have that doesn't cover the employees' families to a plan that covers employees' families. A lot, of, a lot of the things that companies are already doing, shifting the focus a little bit and thinking about what's doing, what, what would be the right thing to do and have a huge impact. And I'd like to finish with modern culture as an example. Um, this, can, this lovely baby has many names. Uh, we talk about security culture. We talk about innovation culture. We talk about learning culture. We talk about culture of error. To me, they're all like fundamentally the same thing. It's about employees being safe make mistakes and, and having that capability and culture in place to learn from those mistakes. And in a compliance focused culture, processes have been designed to meet some compliance requirements and there's some governance in place that ensures that these, these procedures and uh, policy, uh, policies and stuff are followed. And there are usually disciplinary consequences for not following the process. If we, if we switch this uh, to a more sustainable focus, uh, employees actually aren't scared 
by disciplinary consequences, they feel that they, if they as long as they have their acting campaign, if stakes are set, something that the organization celebrates, uh, focuses on learning from, and instead of finding like culprits for all of the issues, it's really more about what went wrong in general uh, as a process. Why, why did we? Why did we not catch this as an organization, as a as a team? And how do we learn from that to catch that next time? And new processes and uh, procedures aren't rolled out from some top leadership ivory tower or something that are designed dem democratically by a diverse group that represents all the teams and roles affected by these processes and procedures. And everyone, regardless of seniority, their role and their demographic, should feel comfortable raising their concerns and questioning processes that don't work. Almost, oh no, I'm missing my final slides. I can't believe it. Oh no. Well, I just want to sum, sum this up right up. So how do we, and why do we combine ESG with GRC? Because it's mostly about using the same capabilities and just shifting that focus from compliance to doing the right thing. And it's just so much more motivating to do the right thing than just be compliant So this kind of paradigm shift from peer compliance to more sustainability in our risk management is actually the way to get our entire organization on board to make this sort of ongoing risk assessment and ongoing learning and all, all these great things into our culture and into the way we operate. And I would love to show a slide for this. Unfortunately, it's not. Uh, we have launched in Finland this campaign called Cyber Civic Duty. Uh, it's a way for uh, every individual. There's 12 civic duties that we can do related to, for example, combating disinformation, recognizing disinformation online, and responding to that, uh, to safe online dating, and all, all these sorts of things uh, that we want to raise awareness in society. We want to get people teaching other people about these skills and we think organizations have a great role in this we've already here managed to get a lot of organizations on board training their people with these cyber, cyber citizen skills and getting them spreading that, those skills in society so i think this is something that we wanna, this is something that we will want to do globally and we'd like to see other organizations involved so if you guys have a passion for sustainability driven and esg driven drc please be in touch and, and let's see what we can do together um, Thank you, everyone. Again, sorry for the technical issues on my end. Any questions out there? I'm not seeing any questions in the chat. Well, thank you so much and um, reach out to me on LinkedIn and, and let's share ideas. There's always something to learn in this space. Thank you.